Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie. I have some farm fresh pumpkin projects for you today. But first, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, the bell if you'd like to be notified when I post, and a thumbs up and a comment is always appreciated. Okay, today I have five farm fresh pumpkin projects for you. My first thing I'm going to do is to try to make a little blue truck out of this little truck. Um, steak, yard steak that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I actually used a crowbar to take that off. Can you believe that I got that crowbar at Dollar Tree the other day? Like super awesome. I don't need the arrow for anything, but I will save it for future projects. And I'm just using a razor blade to cut um, the bed off of the truck here. What I want to do is to try to make a three-dimensional little blue truck piece that I can put things in the bed of the truck and I am going to make this where I can use this for any season so that's going to be really nice. I can use it for Christmas, Easter, any season just by changing the things that I put in the back of my truck. Now if you had two of these pieces um, that would work for sure. Um, you could just use the back piece intact and then you won't have to make a stand for it. You'll see that in a little bit. Now I did have to trim the little pumpkins off the side and I'm just doing that with a razor blade as well because I'm going to add my own pumpkins to the back of the truck. So I'm going to want that to be smooth and just a solid straight line on the side of my truck. My plan is to attach it to the back of one of these wood boxes from the Dollar Tree and then put my tailgate on the front just like that. Now, I kind of made a different version of this truck um, in one of my previous videos where I took the wood truck signs and put them together and made a 3D truck. This is kind of a different version of that. Now, I tried to take the paper off there and you see it did not really want to come off. And so I'm just using some of that cheap wood contact paper from the Dollar Tree to cover my back. And then just using a sanding block, I am sanding along the edges. No need to cut. That's going to give me a really smooth cut and make the back of my project a little bit more finished. Now, I'm actually going to paint on the back. And so I'm going over that with a coat of Agave Chalk Paint by Waverly. I love this color. And I noticed there was a little damage from where I took the wood stake off the back. So I'm just filling that in with a little bit of spackle from the Dollar Tree. And then going over that again with a few more coats of that Agave Chalk Paint um, to give it a finished uniform blue color. And... I really love this project. I think it's really fun that I can use it for any holiday and that I didn't really make this like a fall project. But it's definitely a farm fresh project. Now this is the tailgate and I'm gonna go actually ahead and use the front because I kinda wanna see where the bumpers and tires and stuff are supposed to be. So all that white writing and stuff needs to be covered up though. So I'm just using ivory chalk paint by Waverly and doing several coats until I can't read the writing anymore as a base coat before I go in and do my agave chalk paint, that helps cover it and no writing will show through. So I'm doing a lot of painting on this little truck, so I'm definitely gonna speed this up a lot. I'm just using a paint pen and I am drawing a back or rear windshield for my little truck. I'm just kind of freehanding that on. It's a pretty easy shape. You um, kind of know where it needs to be. I'm trying to make it look like glass. Um, and I'm outlining, outlining it here with just a brown paint pen. I changed the outline several times on this. I decided I want it silver, but I don't really have any silver paint. So I'm just using my silver paint pen and going over the entire back windshield. I kind of like that look because it gives it like a reflective uh, image, like it would be, you know, for glass. And so it did take a couple coats with my paint pen to make that look more silver. And just giving that a dry. I couldn't really decide um, how I wanted to outline that. And I did do it with brown, but I do end up going in here and changing it out a couple times. But I'm trying to make that silver look really uniform. So I'm going over it here with another coat of that light brown, kind of a goldish color um, to cover up all the little stray paint marks there from my paint pen. Now it's time to work on the tailgate of our little truck. Now I want to paint the bumper on there and I don't really have the right color, so I'm just mixing a couple colors together. 
that is elephant and ivory and giving me this soft gray color and I'm just gonna freehand that on it doesn't have to be perfect I'm looking for a, like coastal rustic vibe with this little truck and then using a little ink chalk paint on the tires to touch them up as well because the paint or the black color didn't go really all the way to the top of the tires and then I am using my chunky brush and ivory chalk paint and I am just distressing all over and following that with a baby wipe and a little bit more blue paint if I did too much. Now there's my little farm fresh. I got these little wood cutouts from a package at the Dollar Tree in the fall section. There was like six fall sayings and they are so cute. And so I thought that'd be perfect for the back of my tailgate. Now I'm just distressing the cab of the truck with that ivory chalk paint as well to give it all a uniform look. And here I am drawing on the tailgate with that gold brown paint pen of where it would kind of be on the back of the truck. And I am drawing that and I thought it looked a little stark so I thought I would distress that line as well with a little bit of that ivory chalk paint. And wiping off any excess. Don't be afraid to distress. You can usually take it off pretty easily if you add too much of your distressing. You could always distress this with the Antique Wax by Waverly too, but I'm going for that coastal vibe, so I really like the white on blue. And I'm using that same ivory chalk paint to paint my little farm fresh wood cutout from the Dollar Tree. And just a little skewer to get the paint from the inside of the letter, so it gives me a nice sharp angles with no paint stuck in between. And then I decided I really didn't like um, that brownish color as um, my detail there. So I'm just using a small brush and some ivory chalk paint and making that white. Then I'm going over my little farm brush with just a little bit of agave and a dry brush technique with a little chunky brush just to distress the little farm brush and make it kind of go with the vibe of the truck. Now it's time to work on the bed of the truck. I'm using one of these boxes from the Dollar Tree. This is the one with the stars on the back. It doesn't matter which one because you're just going to cover it up. And that is what I'm doing on the inside and the outside with just um, masking tape. Now I've tried other methods to cover these up and this is probably the easiest. Kind of gives you a flat image. It, it's not perfect, but it will work. Now I want um, this to be kind of blue on all the edges that you're going to see. So you're going to be able to see in the bed of the truck, um, you know, if there was nothing in it or um, pieces are laid to the side or something like that. So I go all in and do all the inside walls and the bottom with an agave color. And then I'm also going to go around the top rim and I'm going to paint the sides. And I end up um, doing one of the backs, the one that's gonna be on the back, but I leave the front side um, with no paint, just because I think that the glue will stick to it a little bit better when I go to attach that to the um, tailgate of my little blue truck. And I'm doing little blue trucks because I love blue. I have a coastal house for fall, but you could totally do this in any color you want. You could even cover it with um, like scrapbook paper or something like that to have your own custom little truck. And I kind of like how that is. And my plan here is to attach the cab of the truck to the back of the box. But I kind of need something to um, brace that on the back. So I'm using one of those jumbo popsicle sticks from Walmart and just cutting that to size with a pair of scissors. And I'm gonna use a little hot glue. I'm using that Gorilla Glue hot glue. It works really good for wood. Um, you can totally do wood glue if you'd like, but I was going for speed and this worked just fine. So once I get that glued on the cap of my truck like that, I am going to use a little hot glue to attach that to my box and kind of center it like that. And we have a little bed of our truck that we can put things in. And uh, what we're gonna put in it today is pumpkins for fall. All right, I kind of forgot to distress the box and that's gonna be visible too. So I'm going in with um, that ivory chalk paint again and my chunky brush. I love these chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree to distress with. 
They are so inexpensive and they do a fantastic job. And I'm kind of just going on all the sides that you are going to be able to see. And then wiping off the excess paint there with just a little baby wipe. I get these baby wipes at the Dollar Tree as well. And uh, they are very um, good to have right next to you when you're distressing things. And it is time to start working on the tailgate. So I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to attach my little Farm Fresh wood sign. Isn't that adorable to my tailgate? And I love the fact that I made this where I can use it for any holiday. It's so versatile. And my plan is just to attach it to the back. So I'm just going to use three lines of hot glue. And excuse my head, attach that to the back. And you'll see I'll need to make a stand to hold up the back. That's why I was saying if you had two of these signs, you could leave the back sign intact and just throw away one of the cabs when you cut it off and that would totally work too and might even be easier. So I'm trying to work with what I had. I had these giant Jenga blocks from Five Below. You can also see I have the little mini Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree and I'm trying to see what I could do to make the easiest stand. It was about three of these giant Jenga blocks. Just use whatever you have. So I'm just using hot glue and I am attaching those three giant Jenga blocks together. I'm gonna be so sad when I run out of these things. I absolutely love them. I should have definitely bought more than one box when I saw these at Five Below. I know they're at Five Below, but they were actually $10, but I got a lot of wood. So I'm attaching that to the bottom of my box to make a little stand with a little bit of hot glue. And what I found was it wasn't very level. The back of my truck was higher and it kind of slanted down. So to remedy that, I'm gonna make new tires and they're almost exact width of these giant popsicle sticks from Walmart. So I'm just gonna go in and measure how tall of a tire I'd like. And I'm going in and cutting the off both rounded ends of my popsicle sticks to make new tires. And then I'm just gonna use some of this ink um, chalk paint and paint those black and what i'm going to do is just attach those tires to the front of my existing tires and that fixed my height problems with the it made the front of the truck higher and made the bed of my truck level so once i get those painted i want to distress them a little bit and so i do distress them with a little bit of ivory chalk paint to kind of make it go uh, more with uh, my piece and to kind of make it look like, you know, little tire treads. You know me, if there is something, I'm gonna distress it for sure. I really like distressing items. It really gives a fun coastal farmhouse vibe to things. And just attaching those to my short tires with a little bit of hot glue and problem solved. Definitely easier than cutting one of those wood blocks shorter. Almost finished with our little blue truck. I decided that um, I wanted to outline the piece a little bit. So I'm just using the side of my foam paint brush and some ivory chalk paint going over the edges. I just kind of wanted this piece to pop and to have a little bit of a finished border. So I'm going over all the tops there around the edges and just giving it a sloppy little ivory outline just to make the little truck look more like a finished project. And then I decide to go around um, the bumper, kind of make that pop out, go around the tires. And you can see my stand is slightly visible, but you can't really tell. Leaving the wood unfinished kind of makes it kind of disappear even more. And I'm fine with that. But it would look cute too if you had two of the signs because then the, the stand that you would see from the front would be um, the two front tires. So that would be cute as well. And I'm just kind of going around any surface I think that needs a little bit of an outline. Then I decide I really don't like that brown outline on my rear windshield. And so I carefully try to outline that in ivory as well with just the tip of my little foam brush. And then the top of my bumper needs outlined as well. And we have a little blue truck. What do you guys think? I think this is a really fun version. It's totally different than the little blue truck that I already did, but I really like it. 
So I wanted to fill the back with pumpkins. I'm gonna use, I like this size of pumpkins. These are from the Dollar Tree. You get three on a thing. They have the little clips on the bottom. I don't really want the clips. So I'm just pulling them off the clips and I think that will be perfect. The only thing that I really don't like about these pumpkins are they're bright orange with little black specks and they look really cheap. So your girl's gonna paint them. So I took off all the stems, super easy. They just pull right out and I am using pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly and going all over. I have found the best way to paint these pumpkins, I've painted them before, is to use some skewers and I am just poking in where the stem of the pumpkin was and kind of going all over. Now there's lots of ridges on these pumpkins and so there's lots of little surfaces you have to get in so you have to do the top the bottom all the way around, get down inside all those grooves this is a lot of painting, so definitely speeding this way up for you. And then I'm just using a piece of a foam from the Dollar Tree to um, stick those in to stand those up. Now, the reason that I am not using my heat gun to dry these is because I tried that the last time I tried to paint these, but these pumpkins are made out of foam and foam and heat does not mix. What happened was the surface of the pumpkins got real rough and bubbly looking, kind of like a really nasty looking gourd. And I didn't really want that finish on my pumpkins. And so I'm gonna be patient and I'm gonna actually let my chalk paint dry. Can you believe it? So this project did, I did have to take breaks on this project just to let these guys dry. And I did three packages, so that was nine pumpkins. And that about filled the bed of my truck in perfectly. I can't wait to use this little blue truck for other holidays. Like I could do even different things for Thanksgiving or I could leave it pumpkins, but I could do gourds and other things as well. Um, for Christmas, you could put Christmas trees back there or other little Christmas items. You could put hearts in there for Valentine's Day, eggs or carrots for Easter. You could definitely use this little blue truck for every holiday which makes it a great versatile piece. Now I did let those dry. You could still see a lot of that dark orange through my chalk paint. And so your girl is going in and doing a second coat because I really want them to look uniform and I want them to be that nice pumpkin color. I love this pumpkin color of chalk paint. It's so pretty and it's such a, a softer orange. It looks way more like a pumpkin to me than the color that they used on those little pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. If you're short on time though, just throw the orange pumpkins in there, like who cares? They also have these little clip pumpkins in white with the speckles, so that would have been pretty too. But I'm just kind of working with what I had. And we've almost got a second coat on all of our little pumpkins. And then I had exercise extreme patience because I had to wait for this to dry a second time. <laughs> but it was definitely worth painting them and I am glad that I did. Okay, they're dry. So all you gotta do is poke all the little stems back in the top of the pumpkins and they are ready to roll and fill up the bed of our little blue truck. We did it. Okay, next project. Look how cute this is. I got this at the Dollar Tree. It's a Farm Fresh Pumpkins Wagon. Now, it's beautiful as it is, but it does not match my decor. So I am gonna beachify this. Is that a word? Okay, it is now. So there is holes where the little um, string was holding it up. And I don't really want this to be a hanging sign. I want this to be a sign that I can put on a shelf. Now, I want the middle pumpkin to be blue, so I'm doing that in agave. It was already blue, yes, but not really the color of blue I was going for. So I thought blue on blue would be an easy transition. Now I am trying to paint the leaf with that green. I noticed that the paint pen didn't do a very good job of coloring the glitter. This whole sign was covered in glitter. The chalk paint covers the glitter really well. So I did go in there with some green chalk paint to cover that glitter and some Antique Wax by Waverly for the stem and the brown, and then going all over with a chunky brush and some ivory chalk paint to distress it. Now, 
I don't really know if I should have distressed it because um, when I distressed it, it made it look speckled because um, you could, it actually distressed all of the glitter. <laughs> Now, I didn't really like that color of green that I used for the stem, and so I did go back over with a paint pen and a little bit um, more leaf color after um, I painted that. And here I am painting the orange one. And I thought this one would look really good orange. So I'm using that pumpkin chalk paint, and then same thing, I did the different layers of green on my leaf. I used the chalk paint to cover the glitter and then I went over it with a paint pen to get it the way I like. Now this pumpkin over here I thought would look really pretty white and so I'm using that ivory chalk paint and I'm actually using it to go over the handle, the wagon, and the wheels to give me a great base to paint those a different color. And you can, these things are like metal but they're like stamped metal so you can kind of see where one pumpkin ends and one begins. And you don't have to be perfect on this, but just kind of do your best. I'm trying to touch up the edges there a little bit to make that look a little bit cleaner. And this one has a stem. I'm using the Antique Wax by Waverly on, but it doesn't really have a leaf. And then I'm distressing that orange pumpkin as well. And the only thing I didn't really like about the white or ivory um, pumpkin was that it just looked a little too stark. So I'm distressing it there with just a little bit of that agave and a chunky brush. And then I thought it needed a little bit more detail. So I'm just outlining it with like this light blue um, paint pen, kind of going around some of the lines and the outside of it, and then distressing that a little bit, just so you can see where the pumpkin is. I still want it to be white, but I want it to have like defined edges and just distressing that and getting it exactly the way I like it. I'm using um, a couple different colors there. Then I decided I wanted my wagon to look like wood. So I'm using that Antique Wax by Waverly. Working in one direction, it gives you a nice wood grain, even on a metal project like this. And I'm gonna go over everything that wheels included. And I went back and forth on this. I thought about making it a little blue wagon, but that I already have a blue pumpkin. I thought about making it a red wagon, but that doesn't really go with my decor, so I went with wood. Now I'm using a brown um, paint pen and a little bit darker color of brown, just so I can outline um, the little wheels on there. And those are all raised and super easy to paint out that little design there. And forgive me if I'm going too fast, I'm also doing um, the handle there. Um, there was a lot of painting on this project, and so it did take me a while. And I know painting is boring to watch, so I have this like super sped up. And then I am distressing that paint that I just did for the handle and the wheels. And I really like um, the fact that I did the wood wagon. I think that turned out really cute. I think that really goes with my decor and it goes with the blue, orange, and ivory pumpkins. And those holes at the top, I did fill those with hot glue. Um, it wasn't perfect, but it was an easy fix um, to fix those holes because it's really hard to use spackling on the metal. Now it's time to put Farm Fresh Pumpkins on here. Now I went back and forth. I thought I should use my Cricut and do some vinyl, but then I wanted this to look like an old fashioned wood wagon. And what would they do? They would like paint Farm Fresh Pumpkins on there, like hand painted. So I am doing that. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> With a white paint pen and just kind of using um, just block letters nothing fancy and farm fresh and I want it to look like you know it was painted on like with a paintbrush so I'm making that chunkier kind of rough paint job and make that pop a little bit I'm still not totally sure if I made the right decision by hand painting this Cricut would have looked really nice it's kind of up to you and your personal taste. Now before it had Farm Fresh Pumpkins on there like kind of really big and really script, I think this kind of looks um, definitely more rustic. And here I'm doing pumpkins. And definitely not perfect, but I think it's gonna work. And I'm gonna do a second coat there on the pumpkins as well. Um, to bring the letters out more and to make them a little bit wider. And 
And I think that works. What do you guys think? Do you like it better? I mean, it was really pretty to begin with. It just did not match my decor and I really wanted it to bring it in and use it as a shelf piece in my house. So to do that, I'm gonna make, need to make a little stand and I'm just using two of those mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and gluing them together. And what I'm gonna do is glue them to the back of the wheels. That way they won't be visible I'm using a lot of hot glue because metal and hot glue don't mix well. So I do have to allow this to dry for a few minutes um, before it is good and secure. And there we go. We have a little wagon. Isn't it cute? Okay, project number three. Shout out to Dollar Tree for giving us crafters plain signs. Check these out. They have the little pumpkin cut out. They're plain on both sides. And I used all oh my agave chalk paint. Oh my gosh, don't worry. I had another bottle, thank goodness. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint this little pumpkin sign agave. You can do whatever color matches your decor or whatever vibe you're going for for your Halloween. But look how easy this is. I didn't have to finish the back. I didn't have to take any glitter off. Shout out Dollar Tree. I'm so proud of you for giving us crafters a plain sign. <laughs> now, it did take several coats of the agave top paint to give me a blue color because it was black and um, you could kind of see that through. If I would have painted it first with ivory, it would have definitely taken less of the agave paint, but that's okay. I just go over it until I'm happy um, with the coverage. And how cute is that little pumpkin cut out at the top? I thought this would make a perfect farm fresh pumpkin sign for my wall. And I can use the existing hanging holes at the top as well. All right, I've about got it, I think. Now, what I'm gonna do on this sign is vinyl. So I am measuring how wide and how tall it can be. And then I go and I design this on my Cricut Design Space. And um, first I want to give a little bit of distress. So I'm doing this while my Cricut cuts out the design and just distressing it with my ivory chalk paint, um, a chunky brush and a baby wipe until I get kind of a coastal vibe for my sign. And I will try to look, I think I still have this up on my Cricut, what fonts I did use um, for my vinyl. And what I, what I used white vinyl, I used the Dollar Tree vinyl actually to make this sign to make it all Dollar Tree. Now, what I found on this white, well, all of the vinyl from the Dollar Tree is that the back rips, it sticks to the mats if you use a sticky mat. Now I had to use my long Cricut mat and so it was the medium grip and it did kind of stick and rim on the back, but no problems with the vinyl. But you can see there on my bright pad um, where it did rip the bottom off. And I was gonna try to save my excess vinyl here, but I really couldn't see at all where one began and one end. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have a ton of this stuff. This vinyl from the Dollar Tree, I think I'll be okay wasting a tiny bit of vinyl. So what I did was I did farm in a script, fresh more in a block letter, and then pumpkins going up and down my sign. Now I'm using some of this paper transfer paper. I love this stuff. I get it on Amazon. We'll definitely post a link. Look how easily that Dollar Tree vinyl comes off on it. So easy to work with. And I didn't even have to weed this, you'll notice, because all of it kind of self-weeded. There was no... Um, this, these fonts I picked, um, there was no like inside of the letters that I had to read out, so perfect. So I'm just trying to line up my pumpkins to try to center that, push that down, scrape it with my little Cricut scraper, and it's time to take off my transfer paper. I find that if you fold it flat like this and kind of go from the side, it's gonna come off way easier and all of your vinyl will stay down. Now here is the top of the sign, the farm fresh, and I'm just kind of lining that up scraping it on and folding the paper right off. And we have Farm Fresh Pumpkins. Whenever I actually use vinyl on signs, I like to use a little sanding block to push that down, kind of make that one with my piece, but I'm always afraid that it could lift off. So how I'm gonna solve that is going over it with just some Mod Podge and sealing down all my vinyl letters so I don't have to worry about any of those letters falling off my sign. And I definitely want to use the mat because I don't want my piece to be shiny. So once I have that on, you can definitely dry the Mod Podge with that as well. 
I decided I wanted a pop of orange. So I decided to do a pumpkin behind my little pumpkin cutout. Doesn't have to be a pumpkin. It could be anything because it's already cut out. But that's what I had. So that's what I used. And I painted that with just that pumpkin chalk paint by Waverly. And I'm going to put that behind my little pumpkin cutout. Um, just to give a pop of color, I think that looks better than um, my brown wall that's going to be behind my sign. And to fit with the project, I'm going to give it a light distress with that ivory chalk paint and a chunky brush. And I'm just going to put it behind it just like that. So easy peasy, I'm just going to attach that with a little bit of hot glue and glue that onto the back of my sign. And it could have been a circle, it could have been a square. Totally didn't need to be a pumpkin, but I had one. Okay, I thought that the piece wasn't quite distressed enough, so I'm going over it again now that I have the vinyl on there and distressing it more with the ivory and my chunky brush and my baby wipe until I get it exactly the way that I like it. And I decide I want my letters to be a little distressed as well, so I'm using a chunky brush in that agave, that blue, and kind of distressing my vinyl as well. Why not? It'll make it look uh, a little bit more hand-painted and more part of the piece. Now, on these kind of signs, I usually make a stencil and hand paint it, but I was going for easy for this project, and I think it worked out just well. Using my existing hanger, I noticed with that little wood pumpkin on the back, though it didn't hang flat against my wall, so I'm actually gonna end up putting it on there backwards and just tying off the front instead of using the little plastic um, clips that were on there and problem solved. Okay, we're on to project number four. So I got this calendar at the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna use the one for October, which is Farm Fresh Pumpkins. And I'm gonna use the plastic bag technique. You will see I got one of these plastic bags from the Dollar Tree. And this is a sign, this isn't from Dollar Tree, but it's from the Dollar Spot at Target. They're $3, they're in with their fall stuff and they come with all these great stencils. Now, the great thing about these signs is they make great two-sided signs for $3 and they're really thick. So I'm definitely gonna save these stencils, how cute are they? But, and I'm gonna leave that beautiful wood on the back so I can turn that over and make that another sign in the future. Now, the plastic bag, bag technique. You're like, Julie, what are you doing? Cutting off the zipper, cutting off the sides. Basically, I want a big piece of plastic. I'm gonna try to attach the calendar to my sign with plastic. I did this on a previous video with fabric and um, I used plastic wrap, but I've heard that you could do it with baggies as well. It's just plastic and you wanna melt it. This is an alternative to Mod Podge and it's definitely a smoother, cleaner way. I did struggle a bit with this project and it could be because that sign that I was using was not like raw wood. It was kind of a glossy black surface. So once I get it all open, I'm just kind of cutting it to size, a little bigger than what I need. And here's the Farm Fresh Pumpkins in this calendar. And I'm just gonna rip out that page. It's a little bit bigger than my sign. And I'm gonna try to put the plastic down like that and then put my calendar page on top. And what I wanna try to do is melt the calendar page onto my sign. Now. This project, I, I'm going to line it up on the top corner there because I don't want Farm Fresh Pumpkins to be cut off, but it's okay if my top, my, my, my bottom and my side get cut off. I'm going to put down a little bit of parchment paper to protect my little mat, and you can use an iron for this, but I have an easy press right here, so I'm just going to use that um, to melt this. And I also put a piece of parchment paper on top to protect my easy press from any melted plastic. Now, I did have to like press this for quite a while, longer than the plastic wrap, maybe because the baggie is a lot thicker, maybe it took more heat to melt, or maybe again, it was because I was going on that glossy side. I'm just kind of going all over, sitting it in areas, checking to see if it's attached. And even though I did struggle with this technique, I definitely still like it. I decided I didn't have it lined up, the plastic was melted in my calendar, but not my sign, so I fixed that real quick. <laughs> and then I'm just like, okay, girl, melt that plastic. And one thing I found is that when it was hot, of course, it, the calendar was not really attached. What I ended up having to do was exert some patience and let this cool. Once it cooled, it was attached. 
um, pretty well. There was a few corners I did have to fix, but all in all, definitely a cool technique to use. And for the excess paper on the sides, I'm just gonna use a sanding block from the Dollar Tree to cut that off and give me a perfect cut along my edges. It also roughed up the side of my calendar, which I really liked. It gave that like light um, paper look on the sides. So I end up doing that, sanding all the sides, even though the paper, um, there was no paper to cut off, just to give it that even distressed look around the edges of my sign. Isn't that an easy way to make a sign? I love Dollar Tree calendars, and I was so lucky to pick this one up. I love the little images inside. And these are the 2022 calendars that they have out right now. Now, I thought it's a little too clean, so your girl's going to distress it. So ivory chalk paint, a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree. I'm kind of going in um, on the sides, working all in one direction, kind of the same direction as like the wood was on the background of the picture. Carefully following that up with a baby wipe. I don't want to mess up my paper too much. Um, one thing I really like about the plastic method versus Mod Podge is that you don't have to worry about all of the bubbling that you get from Mod Podge when you attach it to make signs. And um, you don't have to wait a day for those bubbles to go away or anything like that. And I am fixing that corner with a little bit of Mod Podge and that corner with a little bit of Mod Podge. They weren't secure, the other two were, and so I just glued those down. And just giving it a distress again, because I really want this to look um, farmhouse and it will definitely go more with my decor. Now I thought it needed something. So I'm gonna attempt to make a bow. I'm not great with bows, but anybody can make an expo. So I'm using some of this burlap from the Dollar Tree with their fall stuff. And I'm just making two and making an X using some of this burlap and orange buffalo check from the Dollar Tree and some of this burlap pumpkin ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Aren't they cute? I love the ribbon this year. And then I was kind of playing with other ribbons to see if I had anything else I'd like to go. I thought that orange was a little too bright. So I'm like, eh, hey, that's enough ribbin, right? And all I'm gonna do is use a zip tie and tie that off in the middle. And I have a easy peasy expo. I love making these bows because <laughs> I can actually do them. I'm cutting off the excess of my um, little zip tie, kind of trimming it to size, and I'm just going to attach it over um, that little hanger um, on the side there with just a little bit of twine. I'm just going to tie it on. That way I can cut that off when I go to make a sign on the other side, and I'll have a nice two-sided sign that I can use for two different seasons. Probably make something maybe for Thanksgiving or maybe Christmas with that. And I did need something to cover the little zip tie. So I was thinking about buttons and I did pick out a couple of pump buttons that went with it. But then I decided that I really wanted it to be pumpkins to go with my farm fresh pumpkins. So I'm gonna use one of these little, um, one of the uh, clothespin pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. You get six in a package. And they have the little outline already on there. Just going over that with a coat of that pumpkin chalk paint. And then I am using um, just this gold uh, paint pen to go around the leaf, the stem, and then I decided to go all the way around. I decided not to bring any green into this piece with the leaf, just to make it a little bit more um, two colors to go with the sign. And then I'm going to distress it too with some ivory chalk paint to make it go with the rest of my sign and totally match. I thought about clipping the little clothespin on to the ribbon, and the more I tried, I couldn't really get it on there centered. And so I gave up, and then I just used a pair of pliers to pry off um, the clothespin on the back. Can't get it all off without really splitting the wood, but got it down to one side of it, and then just hot glued that onto my bow, and it is complete. Project number five, sublimation. Farm Fresh Pumpkin Pillow is what I'm going to make here. So I designed this um, on Canva Pro. I will try to save this and share a link below to this pattern if you would like to use it as well. And I have a large format sublimation printer. Well, it's an Epson that I have converted to a sublimation printer. And I can print that large image, but all I have is a 
easy press and so it's only nine by nine so that's why I cut it up into pieces so that I can successfully sublimate this pillow. I got this pillow at Dollar General for only five dollars. It is polyester and so polyester and sublimation that's what you use and so I'm kind of lining up the way I want it here. I'm gonna have Farm Fresh at the top, pumpkins at the bottom and the pumpkin in the middle and I'm using some of this heat tape. I picked this up on Amazon to attach my sublimation paper. Now, if you've never done sublimation before, sublimation you print kind of like an iron on, so you do a mirror image. And I am gonna do 400 degrees for one minute. Now you can see, look at the imprint that I left with my easy press. That's because I made an oopsie and I forgot to put down some wax paper to protect that. So there are some press lines there from that, but I learned my lesson there and I don't make that mistake again. So I'm attaching the fresh and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna press it with my Cricut Easy Press at 400 for one minute, but this time I'm gonna be smart and put down something to protect my poor pillow. And I love sublimation. It's a little tricky um, setting up your printer for sublimation. You have to get the right kind of Epson printer um, is the most expensive thing, uh, inexpensive um, sublimation printer to use, but they're not actually sublimation printers. And so you do have to convert them just by getting some empty cartridges and some sublimation ink, which I get on Amazon. And I actually got my printer on Amazon as well too. I'll post a link to that as well. I got a wide format so I can do like 13 by 19. And I love it. And so I didn't really have to convert it. Um, because I set it up originally as a sublimation printer because my other sublima sublimation printer bit the dust. So there is my beautiful pumpkin. Isn't this a great way to make your own pillows? Now these pillows did not have a zipper so I could not take the cover off. So I'm just doing sublimation with the stuffing in there which isn't an ideal but it definitely works. Now I am kind of um pressing the same area over and over, which I don't really like to do because it does fade it a little bit. And again, doing 400 degrees for one minute on each one of those. And this is the bottom that I made, just some more fall words. And I kind of wish I hadn't done this because when I did sublimate the pumpkins again, it did fade a little bit, but not too noticeable. And I was going to do them all three individually, and then I'm like, you know, I'm just going to try my best. I don't like to do it in two different presses because sometimes you have some errors, but I'm going to try to be really careful here and do 400 for one minute on this half and then move my easy press over and do 400 um, for one minute on the other. I don't know if an iron would work for this because I don't know if an iron gets hot enough. You need it to be really hot for sublimation, 400 degrees. So this is the Cricut Easy Press 2 that gets that hot. I think the original Cricut Easy Press does not get that hot. So hay rides, corn maze, and hot cider. And we have a pumpkin. I'm gonna go ahead and press it a little bit to try to get the wrinkles out. And you know, I was thinking, um, I'm just gonna leave the back blank and um, I can think of something else to put on the other side, maybe something more for Thanksgiving, and I can use it for um, a couple of months. Okay, final reveal time. Farm fresh little blue truck filled with pumpkins in the back. Isn't this an interesting take on the little blue truck? I love that it's 3D and that it actually has a bed of a truck that I can put stuff in, and I love that I can use it for any holiday. And here's our little farm fresh pumpkins wagon. All this took was a lot of paint um, to get it in the color scheme that I like, but I really like the blue, orange, and ivory pumpkins together. I think they look so cute. And my little wood wagon that says farm fresh pumpkins. Here is my farm fresh pumpkin sign for my wall. I love this coastal blue color with the white distressing looks very beachy matches my home and I loved these signs Dollar Tree thank you so much for giving us a plain sign to decorate and so easy with some Dollar Tree Cricut vinyl here's our little calendar sign we made farm fresh pumpkins and I actually used a target dollar spot sign um, and a plastic bag and a calendar page and look how cute that sign turned out 
I love it. And the last project that we did today was our pillow. Here it is. It's a little wrinkly because my family's already using it. Everybody loves a good pillow, right? And so this is what it looks like on my couch, Farm Fresh Pumpkins. And I think it turned out so cute. And you know, it was only $5. So sublimation is definitely a great thing to use to save money. Okay, I hope you liked my five Farm Fresh Pumpkin projects today. If you did, please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. I love crafting for you. Until next time, bye.